Hello, how you doing? So, I've got a bit of a funny story to share with you today. I mean, it's not hilarious, but um, it may make you think. And consider where you are in this magical world of 2021. So, um, over the last, I don't know, well, I mean, I've always done it, but certainly um, in the last year, I would say, I've really stepped up my running. It really helps me. It's my thing. It's one of those things that really helps me. And I've never really been one for running on a treadmill. Also, gyms are closed as well. And I don't have a treadmill in my house. So I am pounding the streets and I'm going to Hampstead Heath, um, which is quite near where I live, um, and all kinds of woods around North London. And I absolutely love it. And quite often, you, by being outside and being in the mix with everybody else, you become really aware of other runners and people who are out and about. Like you get to see um, some really lovely streets. I know that I do. Suddenly I'll speak to Matt and go, oh, I thought I was nearly home, but I took a wrong turn and I've ended up down the street and I thought I was there, but now I'm not. And I really enjoy that process of losing myself. Now on Sunday, I was running along and a couple were walking towards us. And the guy was quite clearly a bit of a joker. And he was sort of darting about in front of his girlfriend um, or the person that he was with. And sort of messing about, like, you know, if you were a parent of this chap, even though he was maybe in his 20s or 30s, you might be like, you need to kind of stop doing that because you're on the pavement, you're really near the road, you're gonna hurt somebody. Anyway, as I got closer to them, I um, had to have that awareness myself of socially distancing because I don't run with a mask on because I just find it a bit hectic, but I'm not near to anybody and so I kind of moved out of the way. As soon as I did, this man, as part of his repartee, did this jump into the road, which again made me jump even further into the road when there's cars coming. And because I was in a bit of a zone, and sometimes when I'm in that thing, um, I maybe called this man something I shouldn't have done. And um, he, and then I continued to run because I suddenly had that dawning of like, you shouldn't really swear at people in the street. But he genuinely shocked me and I felt like he put me at risk after I'd sort of planned. And he saw me coming and we'd had that moment. And I just thought that's a really foolish thing to do. Anyway, he got the Scorpio side of me which, you know, does come out occasionally. And he shouted back at me, and I didn't know what he said, but I'm sure it wasn't particularly nice, because it's not nice if some random swears at you in the street. So he probably had that moment. And I was thinking as I ran home, and analysing the situation, like maybe I shouldn't have done that. And of course, maybe I shouldn't have had that reaction. Perhaps I should have stopped. Perhaps I should have said, do you know what, like, can you just watch what you're doing because we're all trying to do this thing but I kind of kept on going and I realized quite often in life when we get a setback or when we have conflict or when we have something that jars or a particularly different difficult situation it can make us retreat and not want to do it and maybe it's that sign from the universe that perhaps I'm not supposed to be a runner and I shouldn't be there and maybe um, this isn't for me and running's not you know or we can quite easily go into that but I felt really proud of myself in that moment that I didn't go there and instead I just thought next time you need to slow down and handle the situation better and don't be swearing at people in the street you're 39 years old like you should know better Today, what happened, I was running, a hill. it probably wasn't, you know, particularly fast, but this is a hill that I always had to walk. Like, I could fast walk it, but now I've worked up to being able, I was going to say charge, I was going to say charge, do I mean that? No, like, get a lick on, basically. I can really feel like, I mean, and I'm sure, because the way that this man looked at me, like I, and I was looking at my Fitbit as well, like my heart rate was really up and I was probably making those very attractive sounds of <gasps> as I got to the top of the hill. 
And what happened this time was this man who was a runner also, I'm calling myself that because, you know, um, and he was probably 20 years older than me and he had a hat and he wasn't kind of like a professional, like I've got these fancy whatever. He was a bit like me, like I've kind of pieced this outfit together, off we go. And as he saw me coming up the hill, he jumped to the side to let me through, to have that moment of reaching the top of the pavement. And he jumped to the side. And what he did as I walked past was he did this really funny dance, like a celebratory dance for me. And it made me laugh first and foremost because I quite often send this me doing silly dances to my client when they share their wins with me. So. If they say, oh my goodness, like I booked the job or I got this or this happened, I'll send them like with me doing the, I was going to say the running man, the running person, the running woman, or I'll send them like a, me doing a little tap dance or just, you know, being silly basically, because I think those things really need to have to be celebrated. So when this man suddenly just did this dance, and it wasn't in a, like a pervy way or anything, um, he just enjoyed the moment and he was just cheering me on in quite a sort of nurturing, fatherly way. Um, he's not my dad, this is not some kind of weird Jeremy Kyle moment, but I was so appreciative of that stranger in that moment. And um, I just thought, gosh, that is so, important as an energy to lead from, to be somebody who goes, yes, come on, I can see, I can see that moment that you've had. And maybe he was like, mm, maybe she couldn't do that a month ago. Like, I am going to dance for that. I am going to do that. There was another time as well. I'm just going to give you one more example and I'm going to share how this is going to relate to business and growth and all the rest of it. There was another time a little while ago where I was just kind of coasting along and this very professional looking runner woman came towards me and she had a hat on and she had the, the she had the expensive jacket. She had all the like um, stripes, the reflective stripes. She had some really slick trainers. Um, she had a, a look of determination like I am here, I am doing this, off we go. And as I was sort of coasting up this hill, she smiled at me and then she did this. <laughs> and she did, again, she didn't get close, but she gave me this thing of, I see you, go on, off you go, you can do this. And if she could have done like a slow clap, I think she would have done. And it was really interesting because as soon as she did that, as soon as, and it was something about the way that she looked at me that I was like, come on, Raby, get moving. Off we go. You can do this. One foot in front of the other. Here we go. All right. And it felt like I was winding myself up again to, to move as well. And those three examples are things that I see a lot. I mean, maybe not the man dancing in the street. But every time I'm out, I am there. And if it's early in the morning, if there's not many people around, but generally, if somebody passes me, I will make an effort, and they're running as well, I'll make an effort to smile or say good morning or let them by or just even have that eye contact of, I see you, I see you, well done, we're here, we're doing it, slowly but surely. And this is the thing that I want to say in terms of relating to business. None of those reactions towards me were necessarily to do with me. It was to do with my actions. Maybe this man did not like that I'd been a bit leery and shouty in the street. And that's absolutely fair enough. But there will be some people again, like the chap that I mentioned who danced in the street. Maybe that's his vibe. Maybe he's doing that at his kid's school. Maybe when his wife comes home from a busy day at work and said, I got the promotion. Maybe he is that man who is dancing in the street as well. And the woman who did the I see you moment, maybe she's doing that in other areas of her life. Maybe she's mentoring young people. Or maybe like me, she's got a podcast and she's opening up this platform. She's opening up this space for women, for people who want to go, yeah, I'm going to give it a go. 
I mean, I don't know if I've got all the bits and I'm not quite sure how it's going to go, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to put my coat on. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to put my trainers on. I'm going to see how we go today. And it really made me think, how do I want to show up in the world? So of course I have my own goals. I have my own dreams and aspirations and things that make me happy and all of that stuff. But certainly when it comes to running, if we're going back to that analogy, I don't really have a desire, maybe this is a limiting belief, I don't really have a desire to competitively run in the Olympics. I mean, I'm nearly 40, so they probably be like, thank you so much for your application. I mean, they probably wouldn't even reply, would they? But it's gonna be a no for the moment. So I don't have those goals. But what I do have is that commitment to how can I create that space for myself? How can I create that space where I can think, where I can top myself up, where I can reflect, where I can be better, where I can be in a zone that nobody needs me? And I think, again, this is really important as women, that we can be needed all the time, as any person really, it doesn't matter, it's not a female thing at all. We can be needed all the time. We can be at the end of our phones. And so being really conscious about what's gonna work for you, what's gonna help you, what's gonna support you is really a great thing to be able to establish. And going back to this running analogy, I know that every single time, and I do this with my podcast, and you do it from through art, perfect, absolutely. I wish I was artistic and again, it must be a limiting belief, but I do have a vision of myself. Hi, Dawn. I do have a vision of myself later in life, you know, with a little a little drink, a little thing, a little deck chair and, you know, having some artistic time. That would be great. But I notice, going back to this running um, analogy, I notice that I am that person who is giving that eye contact to the woman who's maybe had a baby three months ago and is walking slowly and has maybe left her baby for the first time and going I'm gonna have 10 minutes round the block for myself even though that baby you might feel that that baby's gonna cry for the whole 10 minutes while you're away and what that gut-wrenching moment feels like oh, I don't know I don't know what I should be doing or things like that sometimes I see that and then sometimes it's those people who suddenly wake up and they're 65 and they go I'm gonna start doing this I'm gonna start doing it why not? All right, I'm going to give it a go. Great. I love that too. So what I want to say in this roundabout way is really notice how and be aware and make steps towards how you want to show up in this space. I was talking the other day about one of, on one of my podcasts that you can get all the news everywhere else. You can do that. You can, you can watch and refresh the news all day long. The newspaper headlines are there for us to see. But what I want to say is you won't find that in this space. And so if you do want that news and that negativity and things like that, it's there for you to consume. What I'm really interested in though, is trying to bring a bit of positivity, trying to bring a bit of a reframe and really give you some tools or some ideas to try and make the best of this situation. And I want to say that I'm here showing up and whether we know each other personally or not, I'm going, go on, off you go, you can do it. And I, and this has been a conversation I guess that I've shied away with because this sort of false positivity of me going, oh no, nothing's happening in the world, like this isn't even a thing. It is a thing, but I know that also I have other things that I have to share. And there are brilliant doctors and nurses and um, so many different types of wonderful supermarket um, workers, so many things. I don't have those skills. I'm not a trained doctor, but I am trained in this. And if I can help you still continue to take even tiny baby steps to where you want to go, then that's what I'm holding this space for. And that's what it's about sometimes. And this has taken me the whole of January to find this nuance in my message. 
because as soon as if I suddenly was that person of like whatever guys I'm still gonna be positive and I'm gonna do this people go whoa all right Vicky like that's really inappropriate it's like when somebody starts um drunk dancing on their own they're the first on the dance floor and it's quite amusing and fascinating and weird but after a while people go anyway that's just a bit no well we're not really sure what to do with that but what I want to do and this is I guess my message as well whenever I'm working with clients and things like that it is about those baby steps and I was saying this to a client yesterday where she was like I just haven't been able to do all the things that I wanted to do in January and I said but you've had different circumstances you are homeschooling two children alongside all of these things so no wonder you haven't done it. It's like having an extra job at home and all these other things to do. So it's really about paying attention to what you need first and foremost and breaking it down to the time that you have available or not necessarily. Or really going, okay, I've only got an hour for this. What do I want to do with this time? And I made a video a couple of days ago about the importance and I guess the permission to just keep sharing some of the stuff that you've done previously. And I've certainly done that with the podcast. Like I've got loads of interviews on my computer that I haven't just had a chance to edit and go through yet. And that is not necessarily, that wasn't in the plan because I like there and then I like to be in the momentum of it. And that's just not always the case. But what do I have? I have a bank of 110 episodes so I can reshare those. And as I was saying earlier in the week, that that has paid off. My business has grown, I've been sharing, and my network has grown because I'm interviewing lots of different people. And also it hasn't felt a strain to me. It hasn't felt like um, I've been overstretched because there have been times when I've been overstretched and stressed and felt like I've had that dread for my, my business and I, haven't had that love for it because it's just felt really hard and I've got to the stage now where I'm not interested in it being hard and I give myself permission to if I need to close my laptop and have an early night I will if I need to change the deadline on something like I was mentioning to my client I will it's okay we can just go slowly but surely but just being in the game is um halfway to being there and going back to the running thing, which is where I started today, that for me in the very beginning was just walking around the block for 10 minutes and then suddenly going, oh, I feel a bit out of breath there. It's fine, we can just do it slowly but surely and you'll find your own momentum and rhythm in whatever way works for you. And please don't let anybody tell you differently in a way that don't let anyone say, just do these three things and overnight you will have X, Y, and Z. I think we all know by now it's a combination of things and I was mentioning on a podcast the other day that a coach told me when my son was six months old he asked me what time my son got up in the morning and I said well I mean this is assuming for the first time the guy was like so what time does he wake up and I was thinking well the last time he wakes up and he wakes up for the day is 5 a.m and he was like great you need to get up at four and that just didn't fit with me because I was sleep deprived, I felt really broken, I could barely make a sandwich, let alone hustle harder or any of those sorts of things. So go really gentle, be really kind to yourself, take it slowly but surely. But remember, all of those things you want to be, do and have, they are there for a reason within you. And I really believe this because there are so many things that I just feel so attuned to, like I love that, or that piece of music, or um, I really want to go to this place, like it really fills me up, or maybe there's certain foods that you're like, um, you know, uh, I don't know, like some people absolutely love a cheese board, and I'm a bit like, mm, you know, mozzarella, halloumi, yeah, fine, bit of cheddar, but I can't really do the stinky cheeses, like they just, it's not my bag in that way. But if you suddenly went, hi Nikki, here's a pavlova and a spoon, and this is going to be your afternoon activity, um, I, I would literally unbutton my trousers and get going. And going back to this sense of those things are meant for you, 
it's really fascinating when you lean into that because if you work on the basis that all those things you want to be, do and have are meant for you, you'll find a way to get there. Because do you know what? There are so many other things that are not meant for you in the slightest. Like I've never had a moment where I'd go, God, you know what? I would absolutely love to be an accountant. I would love to make spreadsheets all day. Like that sense of order and sales. And I mean, some people watching are maybe like, yeah, Nikki, actually that is totally my bag. But I've never had that sense. So trust in that fact, there are so many things that don't pull you in that direction. So there may be a reason why you're like, oh yeah, I'm just, I'm just going to trust that the timing will be right. Because there's a reason that you've had those sorts of things. There's a reason that you have certain connections with stuff that you want to do. So I will leave it there. My um, son is watching TV in the other room. My daughter is what um, she's fast asleep. Um, I said to my son, I'm going to do a video now. I'm sorry, you're going to have to watch telly for a couple of minutes. And he was like, oh, OK. He did like a fake. Oh, I think it will be fine. I mean, he knows it's fine. Um, thank you so much for being with me today. If you've gained anything from this or there's one thing that you want to do or um, you want a bit of accountability or just say something out loud, um, feel free to put it in the comments or um, DM me or share it or any of that good stuff. No pressure, just wanted to put that out there as well. But thank you so much for being here. Have a look, I was gonna say lovely Wednesday. It's not, it's Thursday. And I did say to my own coach the other day, like when I know the day, I say it all the time in this kind of cocky day, a cocky way, like, yeah, it's Thursday. I actually didn't know what it was, but last Friday I knew what day it was. Um, it's all the same, isn't it? All right, sending lots of love, lovely to see you and um, I'll speak to you soon, bye.